Hello. Hi, Jun. Uh, it's Sergeant Keith Dougal here. Oh, hello, hello. Yeah, it seems to make you aware that we've currently got two missing persons in the Hutton area. The following several severe winters and flooding last year, it was recognised there was a need to provide an extra dimension to emergency planning, and the obvious way was through community councils have their own support system. Good morning, Brian. It's June here. I'll speak very quickly. We've got, sadly, two boys are missing. So can, can I just get you to continue phoning your telephone tree, please? We're a group, really, who come together to help members of the community in any kind of emergency situation. Living in a rural community, we all need to support one another. The police are on their way. But before the police arrive, I think what we need to do is just check locally the graveyard, farm buildings. Resilience planning was something we've been involved with from day one, and we thought the idea of us all as a team getting an opportunity to put something into a more live scenario would be a really good learning exercise. We will guide them and help them, but the exercise is there, the responsibility is theirs, and the people who will take part come from the community. Yeah. And you've searched local areas, is that correct? Yeah. Is there any information that you can provide me at this moment in time? Obviously the scenario was that we were half an hour to an hour away and knowing that we had that group there on the ground carrying out initial searches was of uh, great benefit. Team 3, Clarabad. Members of the resilient community can give us information in the area because they have knowledge and they can come out under our supervision and, and help in the search. You get down that way? Yeah, well, you get the, the road to get right down to the mill itself. Ah, right. Yeah. So you, we can't get right down, can we? Yeah. Now, River John, River John, River X ray, 634. Considering it was the very first time this had actually happened, it run very, very smoothly. If you guys want to cover a wee bit in, in that, yeah. inside, okay. and you cover on that okay. side. Take your welly off and have a little look at your knee. <laughs> and the other leg's fine, yeah. so all the way down. You're feeling the sort of emotions and the stresses that can be involved. For any future live scenarios that come up, folk are going to know exactly what to do. That's it, you go in first, Ange. Keep going. You can just hop all the way over like it. I've never been involved with the emergency services, so to see them performing, um, all these volunteers performing, is really interesting. It does show just how much work the, the police do, the, the mountain rescue people do, and I've never really appreciated. It's been good to see the different agencies working together uh, and to see something of our limitations as a grouping as well, but also to be encouraged that there is a lot more we can do. Okay, generally with the, with the debriefs there's a lot of uh, sorry, interaction between folk here. Can I ask, what is the realistic time for the likes of Mountain Rescue to get to a situation? We had people chatting through the incident together from our own different perspectives, but chatting together with this kind of single common purpose. They didn't say, right, well, we're going to take over. They actually involved us and gave us tasks to do. People in the community are speaking more and some just don't see it as emergency planning, they see it as building a community that looks out for each other. Absolutely great job, Brian. It's so nice to know that you live in a place where there are people you can call upon in any kind of emergency. The biggest takeaway lesson is, is the fact that we all need each other. The ultimate aim is to have all 67 community council areas within the Scottish borders able to deal with any emergency situation. It's a self-reliance process and it's working. <laughs>